Uh, welcome to the Nerd Brand Podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Jace Davis. I'm here with Mitch, our creative director, and we have a new nerd, Michaela Meek. Michaela is an account associate with us, and uh, her job is to um, help John find Zen. <laughs> <laughs> help him find his happy place. Yes. I go, shh, shh, cookie. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's under control. I have it, and, it, and it's been very, very helpful. So we're very happy to have you on the team. And with us, uh, you know, having an extra pair of hands, an extra brain in the room to be thinking about things is incredibly valuable. Yep. So yeah, I'm happy to be here. Glad yeah. to have you. Yeah. So we're going to be going through a month of onboarding with you, uh, which is a little quick. Typically, we try to pace that more. But mm-hmm. you've seen, I think, a glimpse already of all the stuff that's in the pipe. Yes. <laughs> all the things are happening all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it's getting warmer. And as the weather gets warmer, you know, people want to do stuff. Mm-hmm. And I segue from that into our topic, which is uh, this is the first part of our series of business networking. A while back, we had a gentleman on our show who, uh, this is before we did uh, the video portion, who came and talked about networking with us. And uh, we'll probably have to invite him back because that's kind of his his thing. He's really an expert at that. But I thought that for this episode, we'd touch on that and discuss it because all three of us have been to networking events and have left them. <laughs> and, and have been like, well, that was an experience. <laughs> um, so Robert in the booth is like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so t- this episode, we're going to revisit some basics about networking, what it is, what it's for, and to kind of understand that the, the one tactic we always apply, it's always about brand awareness. We don't really go to networking events to try to make a sale. It's uh, our face, our name is in front of people. And, you know, hopefully it's all about getting that touch and establishing that relationship. It's mostly about an awareness. It's like an awareness campaign. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, you know, when you have actually actually people out there, like I'll drag sometimes Mitch, you know, we've been to ribbon cuttings and they'll see Mitch and they'll be like, there's another nerd. You know, it's really kind of funny how that happens. So I don't take it personally. Yeah, it'll happen to you. They'll be like, oh, um, so there's more yeah. than one of you. Yeah. 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 I They're th- multiplying. Yeah. <laughs> I used to tell people that we're like Mogwai. We get wet. We multiply. Don't feed us after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> For reasons. <laughs> yeah. But when you meet someone at a networking event, uh, I think the mindset is, what are you going to ask me to take something away from me or to give me? Um, that's usually the first engagement I feel like of any sort of sales process, because that's just what's going to happen. What are you going to give me? What are you going to take away? Um, if you have any stories about your favorite times at networking events where you're just like, no, we didn't, we're not going to name names because we protect, <laughs> the, we we protect don't wanna, yeah, don't hurt feelings and we didn't mm-hmm. protect the guilty, uh, because sometimes they just don't know. But if you have stories about like, well, I went to this event one time and this happened, you're free to share them <laughs> as long as they're PG. <laughs> well, most of the, most of the networking events I've been to, have been with you. So mm-hmm. we shared those things. I mean, and, but, before the podcast, when we were talking in the in the green room, we, we were talking about how, you know, sometimes it's like getting descended upon by vultures mm-hmm. because there's people there who have one thing in mind, and that's closing a sale. Yeah. And that's one of the first things we talked about is that, that you know, networking events, at least your first dip in the, in the pool, so to speak, isn't about closing a sale. Nobody knows who you are. Right. Okay. Everybody's there because they need something or they're looking for something, but it's like, our our methodology is the first job is is for us to let people know who we are and what we're about. So even if there's not a need at that moment, they become acquainted with us and they'll remember us. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you when you meet somebody, I mean, it's all about I've talked about it before. It's about curiosity. Uh, if they're curious about something, they're going to ask you questions. And now you have an invitation. I've even said before, like, I, well, I've got, six, you know, I should read my own notes for the podcast. <laughs> but anyway. You did go to the trouble of typing it up. Yeah. Uh, so suggestions when you go to an event. Arrive in a good mood and well-rested. Have you all ever seen that where that didn't happen, where somebody was? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, hey, what was it? Uh, well, it was actually a 505, so someone kind of overindulged, if you know what I mean. Uh <laughs> So they just got a little, uh, they, they started happy or happy hour a little early. Um, well, that, but but that's, that's, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 you're fine. So, but uh, they were definitely in a good mood, but uh, 
<laughs> they, they, they needed rest. A after little that. too good. I'm, yeah. I, I missed that one. <laughs> well, I mean, that, and, and that's kind of the thing about these networking events. Most of the time, they happen very early in the morning. Yes. Or I they happen it. at the end of the day. Uh, I don't like the ones early in the morning because <laughs> um, I like to sleep a little bit. I mean, I I kind of like to get things done in the morning and then I can move on. So I have this block of time in the afternoon. And we've talked before about like in our industry, we're not nine to five. We're not like we're not Henry Ford putting lug nuts on tires. We're not in that manufacturing realm. So there's blocks of time you can work in. So I'll take time to, you know, kind of take a break, do whatever I need to do. And then five o'clock, I know I need to be at this event and I'm there till seven o'clock. And then that's part of me, what I consider me working. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge because if I show up tired, I know I've made a mistake because I'm kind of like not there. And I know they can tell like Jason's glassy eyed. Jason doesn't drink. It's just, uh, he's just like, <laughs> wanting. had a day. I've had a day. I want a nap, <laughs> 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 but it's important to arrive rested. And that's why I'd take that time. If I know I'm going to go to a late event, I don't, power nap because when I nap, I don't know if y'all have this problem, but I, I wake up feeling sick. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I'm not a good napper. I wake up almost less refreshed mm -hmm. than I would be Yeah. otherwise. Yeah, I just need a brain break. Uh, I need to stare at something else. I think that's mostly it for me. Um, you're laughing. I think that you do the same. Yes, I just <laughs> say <it. laughs> I get fixated on the computer like, I'm going to go for a jog now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> jog my memory on another <clears throat> avenue. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I see, like, a lot of times on Slack, Mitch, you go walk the dog. You're just like, well, no, walk I, do the dog. That I do that so he'll leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, back in the day, we used to do this podcast and uh, we'd do it on Zoom, and Mitch would be in there, and there was a couple things that would happen we had to work through <laughs> for audio. <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm going to bring up. My, One was a squeaky chair. My squeaky but, chair. Because he was kind of a fidgeter. Uh, it still was a, just a squeaky chair. Yeah. Well, we bought him a chair and solved that. But then we started hearing, <laughs> 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 at the door <laughs> every time we would do the podcast recording at the same time. So I thought we'll change the recording date and time. And no, that doesn't matter. The cat still <laughs> wants food. Well, that was when we got a new kitten. And that's when I learned that my blue snowball mic was very, very sensitive. Ah, yeah. See, mine is uh, I need to replace it, but that's a tangent. Anyway, <laughs> um, the other one is uh, don't arrive with any expectations other than meeting people and learning what they do. Now I know this is not like a, <laughs> we're laughing because robert just held up a whiteboard and something on it and i am not gonna say what um needless to say it's it's a situation in network events we've all run into that we'd rather not yeah um i let me see how if i can articulate this uh so robert you'll have to listen carefully and go like no nah, i gotta edit that out sorry um it's a uh a, a click that you tend to run into and heard <laughs> yeah and you kind of you kind of realize quickly what it is you stepped into and you're like how do i very graciously excuse myself yeah. uh, how do i extricate myself from this yes, situation uh, because again it's only two hours and i don't want to spend an hour talking about blank so i mean because you're trying to be nice because again a networking event it's about the other person you don't really talk about yourself so i try to go in with the expectation of meeting people and Socializing. I know that sounds very strange for a networking event, but it puts my mental state into that to get it out of what we talked about trying to get a sale. Because if I go into a networking event and I don't prep myself mentally that way, I'm in that mood like I think most others are falling into. And it's understandable. We're all people are getting backed into financial corners right now. So I kind of understand why, but it's also a really bad place to go to. Um, it's, it, it's a place to make introductions. To get acquainted with other other people, find out what they do, um, see if there are complementary resources. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if in the long term, that is outside the networking event, you're able to make a sale, that's fine. But like any other business, it's about making connections with people who may not have a need at the moment, but they may have resources that can help you with another project. They may know someone who may need our services or, or, or your product or whatever the case, but it's about getting, it's like you said, it's about getting acquainted, getting to know, getting to know them first and then letting them get to know you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I actually met someone we had on a show here who, and I was talking with her and she was, they had a need and told me what it was. 
right across the room was the person that could fill that need. So I literally just walked him over and said, hey, meet so-and-so. Right. And that was it. And walked away from that, and they were probably going to work together. So that, well, yeah. Well, what's one of the best things you can do uh, when, when it comes to networking, when it comes to you know making connections? One of the best things you can do, aside from actually doing work for them, mm-hmm. is to help them solve a problem. Mm-hmm. Then they remember you. Okay, if you're able to help somebody out in a way other than just taking money out of their pocket, you've helped them, and that's going to stick. They're going to be more inclined to remember you if a need arises or if they know someone and who has a need that arises. I mean, it's that. I mean, that to me, that's the heart of where the value of network. Well, it's, it's twofold. It, like when we first started Nerd Brand, it was a great way to introduce people to us and introduce ourselves to the marketplace. Just hey, this is who we are. This is what we do. What do you do? And then they. It's free advertising for, for the most part. Pretty much, yes, it is, exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. I know, Michaela, your uh, background degrees in communications, mm-hmm. uh, which is really one of the things when I started noticing, like, you know, we when we put out our job request, it was under marketing coordinator because that's kind of what agencies do. I know I made a hard left turn there and changed it to kind of push it. The reason is, is because of that, is because I started realizing that when you're in a room and talking to people, you're probably actually better at it than I am. You just, it's practice. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I've been through going through practice now for about two years. So now you're coming in. So I'm not really sitting here like, Oh, I tell you how to do it. You're actually, I'm (laughs) probably going to learn some from you as we ghost each other. Um, but the, uh, that sort of like hit me where I was like, wait a minute, she's the other warm body that can go into a room and, uh, you're not with us. You're not pressured to do that. I mean, you can tell mm-hmm. about this podcast here. It's like, that's kind of what our tactic is because a lot of like Mitch brought up, it happens later. There's always like, Hey, let's get a coffee. You want to get a coffee later? You want to go over to the corner here? Well, not, maybe not say that. That's not really a great <laughs> place to do, say that in a networking event. It sounds a little creepy. We know what you mean. Um, yeah. Gravitate toward the food. I don't know, whatever, but have you, as you've, cause you've got some experience under your belt. Mm-hmm. Um, have you had, those like any stories that stand out uh, other than the uh, the one that showed up a little too happy at five. Uh, <laughs> too uh, happy at happy hour. Yeah. Um, like successful ones yeah. or, um, yeah, I would say so. Um, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Um, well, for instance, I, I was a sub for a BNI group, which I mean, like I said the other day, BNI groups, I just, I feel like that they stick to an agenda. It's like a checklist that you have to mark off. Like, okay, I had my one-to-one. I have my referrals. Now I have to emphasize on that close of business, mm. which I feel like that's a lot of reasons why people emphasize a close of business when they go to networking events. Cause I feel like a lot of them attend the BNIs and I feel like that emphasis on that it's carried over to other networking groups. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because a BNI is a, to me is a completely different environment than just a general networking event. Mm-hmm. It, to me, it's not as much about check going to a networking event. Isn't as much about, checking all those boxes mm-hmm. is it is about just kind of relaxing mm-hmm. and again, just making those introductions. Hey, how are you? My name is such and such. I do mm-hmm. this. What do you do? And, and it's just, and building, I mean, the, the, word, the key word there is network. Mm-hmm. It's building a network of people and resources that you will have handy regardless of whether it's a new business need. There's a service line that, that, that you may have a client, that they require that maybe you don't provide that now, you know, somebody who does, I mean, B and I's are similar in that, but it's, it's much more, it's the same people generally every week. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about, we got to do this. We have to do this. We have to do that. It's agenda driven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and it's, but it's, uh, it, it works for certain industries. Uh, it doesn't really work for ours. Um, I think that a lot of that it's self-evident when you walk into a BNI, kind of look around and see who's in the marketing chair, or what right. that mm-hmm. constitutes as marketing. I've been in some where I'm like, that's not marketing. <laughs> and see, I worked for a nonprofit beforehand. So I was like, how does a BNI, uh, other than creating like uh, partnerships and donorships, mm-hmm. like how can they benefit with us? Cause it's like 50, 50, but a lot of it is like from our end, like we're making the referrals and that's where I, I was getting at as a. Uh, I know someone in our group who worked in heating and air conditioning and one of my coworkers at the time, he was like, Oh, my uh, furnace is busted. And I was like, Oh, I have a guy for you. I yeah. have information. And that referrals are big. Like, I feel like that's even more pertinent than the close of business. Cause you're actually referring to somebody who needs your assistance right. rather than you're like, you feel peer pressured. Like, Oh, I don't know if I need to make this transaction <laughs> right. or, 
uh, close a business. So I feel like that's even more valuable. That's a really good thing to bring up because a lot of times that when you get involved with those, you feel obligated to buy from uh, certain folks that got referred to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been in the chair where I've had to very nicely say, like, I don't need that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't need it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, the other thing, you you go to a networking event and you just kind of go there and be and kind of the only thing you have to do there is be yourself Mm -hmm. and represent yourself and what you do. BNI, you've got to, going back to the check boxes, there are certain responsibilities you have to perform to stay within the, you know, stay in the BNI. It's much, it's much more, I mean, it's, it's, it's about what I would call hard referrals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why they have a, and, and we're not trashing BNI no. by any means. It serves it's, a it's, purpose. It, it does. It really, it's really helpful for, like I said, certain industries. I think for what we do and for nonprofits, I don't think it is. I, I think it's like you said, you're, you're giving away more than you're gaining. And I know they're saying is givers gain, but I got to eat. I kind of have that habit and I want to keep it up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to, at some point, you know, there's gotta be something that comes out of that. But, uh, I think that when you go to any sort of networking event, that's not your, that should not be your focus. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though you know that that's what you need, right? You just have to kind of psychologically say like, no, I'm not going to go in there with that focus. So it's almost like you're trusting the parties you meet that they will see that and they will want to help you. Right. And we've got a few of those that are, you know, with us in orbit nerd brand in that way now. And and so that's kind of nice, but they started out with me just kind of doing that. Like, you know, go talk to this person, talk to that person, meet this, whatever. Um, it's a really different ecosystem. And you think if you look at it in that in that context, of, um, a, a BNI is more of a close set. Yet you have to have a re- you're supposed to bring guests ever so often. That's that's a requirement. Yeah, that's the thing mm-hmm. that I, uh, I I was always like. At some point, you're going to run out of people you know. Right. So what do you do? Just knock on your neighbor's door and be like, "Hey, Bob, we don't really talk except to argue over <laughs> where your lawn is and mine ends." And, and, but and you want to come to my group? Yeah. <laughs> but if you look at if you look at these. You know, these network events that are spot, they can be sponsored by chambers of commerce or, mm-hmm. or other business group types of groups, but they're much more fluid. You'll, you go to one, one week, you'll have one group of people. Mm-hmm. You go the following well, or following month, maybe to a different event, to that same sponsored event. There's going to be a few different people there than that were there at, that were there last time. Mm-hmm. So it's, you're, it's, it, there's, it's refreshed. The group, so you you're, I think you're exposing yourself or have the opportunity to expose yourself to a wider audience in networking events than you do necessarily with a BNI. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the membership groups and, and, you know, there's a difference between networking groups and private business clubs and, you know, chamber leads groups as they call them. I think the leads groups are very close to what BNI is mm-hmm. trying to do without all the, Oh, you didn't meet quota. You're out. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not pay your dues. Yeah. So, um, they all have benefit though. And they all feed one another as far as being able to form relationships and work, you know? Um, but you have to, the biggest thing is you got to think about your time. Where do you want to put your time in? Where's the best? Frankly, it's that old term. Where's your ROI? Where's that going to come at? You know, is it going to come out of a lead group? Is it going to come out of BNI? Is it going to come out of a private club? I mean, where where is that going to come at? Because you're going to be spending time. And I think if you evaluate how much time you put into something and what you're getting out of it, it takes a while to figure that out, by the way. It's mm-hmm. like a year probably is a good term to say, all right, I'm going to look back over this last year. What did that do for me? And then go, oh, okay, well... Maybe I need to change tactics now or groups or something. Um, the other one I had on here was don't offer uh, a card unless asked. Uh, I don't, uh, there's a couple of reasons I don't do that. Number one, I am cheap and our cards <laughs> are expensive. Uh, <laughs> I admit that. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm not giving you that as a new employee. You know, you're like, oh, am I not supposed to be doing it? No, you're, you're going to get your cards very soon. They're on the way. <laughs> But uh, what I the, my philosophy behind that is is that if they're really interested, it, it's a qualifier, right? And so if they ask me, then I know, like, okay, I'll this will this will come of something later. Yeah, this is sincere. Yeah, yeah, because I think a lot of us go into these events, and and it's kind of cool. You kind of get the the pot, and you get the drawing thing that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of quit doing that too because I'm like, but that's that's uh, that was like three dollars. I just. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like I should, like I say, maybe I should ask Mitch and John about making some cheap cards so that I can just do that because that card. Yeah, I don't, there you go. I don't know what happens to it after it goes in the bowl. Yeah, there, there's a tip. There's a tip for you. If you know, you know, if if, if you're kind of washing your pennies in a, as a business and you want to go to these events and you want to put your card in the fish bowl. <laughs> Just have a bunch of like one color cards printed on cheap stock that you just use just to put in the fish bowls. These are my fish bowl cards. Yeah. These are my lead gen cards. Yeah, exactly. And that is today's pro tip, everybody. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> Robert will add in post maybe the star over my head. I don't know. We'll see. Another good alternative is just using a cocktail napkin. Just like, uh, Jason Davis, <laughs> right. here's my information. Bowl. <laughs> and and, and no, what you t- when people look at you funny, say, no, th- this is a customized business card. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good idea. So if I get feedback and somebody sa- and Joshua from the chamber be like, um, Michaela, put a napkin in the bowl. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> like, it wasn't my idea. Um, anyhow. <laughs> that's Just really being good. resourceful. That's <laughs> really good. I like the way you think. Yeah, I love that because what you have done is you've put a temptation into my mind and John's going to watch this later and he's going to probably text message me like, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, the next one is don't pitch unless invite it to. So hopefully you're engaging enough that they're curious to ask, as I've said. But if you do, try to get a coffee meeting later or find a more private spot. Um. So we all pitch. We're always pitching in our businesses. We're always telling people about what we do. That's a pitch. You know, people say, well, don't pitch. Don't be salesy. Yeah, but that's what we all are doing. You're not going to get away from that. So let's just be honest and call it what it is, right? But I think that that is the, what, what's trying to be conveyed is, and I've, I've not actually had this happen to me. Maybe you all have. Because even though we, Mitch and I have been to same networking events, and you've been to some, I haven't been pitched. I feel like, like the, the, you know, if you do this, you get 35% off. If you do this, we offer that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, has that happened to either of you? Nobody's the, regurgitating a brochure at you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. Other than like a leads group or B and I again, like the 30 second commercial. Yeah. Cause sometimes that's when they have a need. Yeah. They'll ask at the very beginning. So that I think qualifies as a pitch in a way. Right. But like in a networking event, like a five Oh five, I don't think I've had someone like, Oh, let me uh, share this information with you. Yeah. Uh, Let me force feed you what I do and why this is going to be good for you. We got a BOGO going on. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. A uh, BOGO. Wow. Uh, so hopefully this has been an episode that has been very enlightening for you. Yeah. Um, but let Mitch put his hand out. I think that's a sign he's got something to say. No. Oh, no, you're just putting your... Okay. I, I try to watch hand. like social cues and body language with you and it gets harder as we go. I just... I don't know. Hand. I don't know why. Um, anyway, uh, pro tip, pro tip, work hard on, which I guess is another one, Mm -hmm. um, is, uh, work hard on your pitch before the event, read the room and and find ways to discuss yourself as briefly as possible. Um, brevity. When conversational, I mean, like you, I mean, you said, read the room, you, you want to be responsive to the people that you're acquainting yourself with. You, You want it to be, you want them to be organic. It goes back to nobody wants to be pitched at if they've just met you mm-hmm. and don't know anything else about you. So pay attention to the, the course of conversation and, you know, listen for one thing. Do a lot more listening than you are talking, I think is probably, and you've, you've kind of highlighted that. And let that kind of guide you as far as how deep into the conversation you want to disclose services and needs and all those sorts Leave of things. Leave room for curiosity. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So... When you do it, like you said, listen, and then don't just stop. Don't say anything else. And what, what it does, because, you know, Michaela writes beautiful emails. It was a <laughs> qualifier for your hire. Uh, you actually did the thing without a, us asking you to do it when you started responding to emails. What was it? I was going to ask you, like, can you write an email as if you're going to do that? And you already did it. And it was, I don't know, it was like earlier on. And John was just like, <gasps> <laughs> you know, he was just so impressed. And then I sent it to Sharice. And she was like, I love her. <laughs> I was like, all right, if we don't do this, I messed up. <laughs> but it's sort of like in a way that you write, you leave room for that uncomfortable tension mm-hmm. that it forces the person to have to feel like they have to respond. Mm-hmm. 
And I love that. <laughs> I just don't like one ended conversations. I'm not, that's not my kind of person. Like someone says, okay, I'm like, no, I don't want that. I want you to have an actual conversation with me. Like we're, we may not be face to face. Like we're uh, electronically uh, having a conversation, but it's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, you'll notice one of the things you'll notice is I may write emails and ugh. <laughs> um, sometimes I'll fish them to Mitch, like help. <laughs> and then it may go to you. It may go to John and get cleaned up before I send it. You know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it doesn't. Depends on how busy or if I know something you don't because it's not something you need to, you know, really twist on. See, and I feel like that's what takes me a long time to actually deliver, send the message out. Cause I like read it over and make like, okay, I make, I gotta make sure it's the right tone. Mm -hmm. My roommate last night, she's like, I want to make sure that our roommate is invited to dinner. And I said, okay. I'm like, she just got out of the gym class. She's like, well, how do I say it without being blunt? So I'm like, give me the phone. And I'm like, <laughs> we are at such and such restaurant. Uh, we can add an extra chair or we have another restaurant reservation and we can meet you there. It's completely up to you. So she's like, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it ma that matters. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a skill set. I know that there's probably a lot of that that you went to school for. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like that's just kind of a, I don't know, Mitch, you can describe that because you work with creative people. It's just sort of something you're, I don't know, born with. I don't know what well, to say. Well, I mean, it, it, it all goes back to, again, what I was saying before, about being conversational, about nobody wants to be talked at. Uh, they want to be spoken to in, in, in a fashion that leaves room for them to to contribute. It's like, well, I mean, with an email, you want to respond. Generally speaking, you want them to re reply back to you. So you do it in such a way that you, you there's open-ended questions and, and things like that. It's, it's, it's like you're actually having a conversation without them being in the room. So you leave room for them to want to respond. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in a lot of ways, good advertising copy works in that same way. So it's really, I mean, it's like you know, we say all the time, everything's an ad. Well, us attending a networking event is a form of ad for us. And the things that we are saying that we're disclosing and, and the questions that we're asking people that we meet there's an, it's an advertising dynamic. Mm -hmm. So you want that, the open-ended questions, you want the responses because you want to hear back from them as much or more than what you're saying to them. Works the same way in email, works the same way in a, I mean, heck a text message. I mean, it's, yeah. keep, keep it, make it feel organic, I think is the key. And I think that's uh, part of what Michaela, I think the, probably what makes her so good is it comes off, her communication comes off as organic. It doesn't, it's not forced. It's not rote. It doesn't sound like a million things you've you've heard a million times. You know, it's like like a form letter or something like that. Um, that's the key. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not driving toward Michaela's role is not sales, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, her her role is to support accounts. Uh, you know, to assist with. Uh, you know, I think you stated that it's not the end of the chain of marketing. It's at the very beginning of the stages at it. Mm -hmm. uh, so she'll be in the room with clients, with meetings, um, listening with ears that we don't maybe aren't listening for. And because and sometimes when you do a meeting, it's nice to have another set of ears in the room that can listen in a different way, but also not while I'm talking to the client, they're hearing things that we're both saying that mm -hmm. like, okay. So there's, there's a lot of usefulness mm -hmm. to that. And there are tasks, obviously, you'll be, you're not sitting at home with your laptop and going like, oh, what am I doing today? <laughs> um, some days, maybe, but <laughs> hopefully not too many. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We always get, find we, something to do. <laughs> yeah. We keep, her, we keep her busy, not with monotonous work, but it's just, uh, you know, we have, uh, I think this is day three, four. Um, <laughs> yeah. Having you on the show was kind of like a. Uh oh, John got sick, and then John was actually the one on Slack that was like, "Maybe Michaela could go." And it's like he tagged, I think he tagged you in Slack, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> it's worked out just fine. Yeah. yeah, but John will be back. Uh, he's just feeling a little under the weather, uh, taking care of his kiddos. Uh, so you know that happens when you have some young ones. Um, but uh, if you want to learn more about, uh, you know, networking, tune in for the next episode of this podcast. We're going to talk, discuss uh, part two about this. Uh, Michaela will be back with us. And, um, you know, just remember out there, keep your nerd brand strong. <laughs>